Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Welcome to the 10th day of our 2020 days, Srimad Bhagavatam reading challenge. Our today's speaker is an initiated disciple of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj and have been serving Srila Prabhupada mission as educator, teacher and preacher, practicing Bhakti Yoga for over 28 years and offering seminars, classes in person and online. On the behalf of ISKCON Bhagavad Mahavadhyala in North America, I'd like to welcome our today renowned speaker, His Grace Jiva Tattva Das. Hare Krishna Puj, welcome. Hare Krishna, Isha Krishna Prabhu. Again, I'm very grateful for providing me this opportunity. It was a very dear topic of my Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. He would give us a lot of instructions from the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak on this particular topic, which was very dear to my Guru Maharaj. So let's start with the invocation prayers. Uh, dear devotees, you can join me in saying the invocation prayers for Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam namaskritya naram chaiva narottamam Devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam mudiriyet Shavatam swa katha krishna punya shavana ketanaha Hridayanta stohe bhadrani vidunoti suhasatam Nashta prayeshwa bhadreshu nityam bhagwata sevaya Bhagavatir Uttam Shloke Bhaktir Bhavti Nashtaki. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Again, I am very grateful for recording in progress. Iskan Bhagavat Mahavidyale, North America, to giving me this opportunity. Today was actually Anandrupa's day, but she is not doing well. Actually, both of us are not doing well, but we are making an effort to serve Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada's mission to the best of our abilities. Hare Krishna. I'll be sharing our screen. Okay. So, uh, there's a share screen in the down. You should be. Yes, yes, I know. Thank you. So, here, let's cover this particular verse because this is where Prahlad Maharaj is sharing with his uh, classmates. As when one should take to Krishna consciousness and one should start their spiritual journey. So again, uh, please join us for Guru Pranati, Srila Prabhupada's Guru Pranati. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gaurvani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshtarine Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th canto, 6th chapter, 7th verse. Muddhasya balye kaishore kridato yati vamsatihi jaraya grasta dehasya yatiya kalpasya vimsatihi Muddhasya, of a person bewildered or not in perfect knowledge. Balye, in childhood, Kaishore in boyhood, Kridataha, playing, Yati passes, Vimshatihi, 20 years, Jariya, in, in, by invalidity, Grasta Dehasya, of a person overcome, Yati passes, Akalpasya, without determination, being unable to execute even material activities, Vimshatihi, another 20 years. Translation by His Divine Grace Vasipakti Vedan Swami Srila Prabhupada. In the tender age of childhood, when everyone is bewildered, one passes 10 years. Similarly, in boyhood, engaged in sporting and playing, one passes another 10 years. In this way, 20 years are wasted. Similarly, in old age, when one is an invalid, unable to perform even material activities, one passes another 20 years wastefully. Hare Krishna. So here, this is the instruction that Prahlad Maharaj is giving to his class base. 
and I want it to uh, the invocation press. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamai Ham Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shiyutapadakamlam Shri Guru Nveshtamamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahgana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahangana Lalita Shri Vishakha Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namoste Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavani Shwari Vishpanu Sute Devi Pramani Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhya Shakripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnade Bhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadigaur Bhutta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Forgive me devotees, uh, we are actually going through flu. <laughs> Trying to serve me you know, again, Guru and Dharma. We got this bug over the weekend. So, today in this class, we'll be covering the six topics. And Srila Prabhupada actually wrote Translative Teachings of Prahlad Maharaj, a small book. So, six topics that we'll be covering is the Dearmost Person, Chapter 2, it talks about we are spoiling our lives. Third is Family Evasion. And fourth chapter is, I love Krishna more than anything. Fifth is realizing that God is everywhere. And sixth, last, last but not the least is, Krishna consciousness, the perfection of mercy. Hare Krishna. So I would like to ask you a question and you can share your response in the chat. When is the best time for Krishna consciousness? So we heard Prahlad Maharaj is revealing to his classmates. And I will give you a gist of the topic that is being discussed today. So Prahlad Maharaj's teachings, yes, we see that he is instructing his classmates. That's in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto. And 5 through 15, those 11 chapters basically talk about Prahlad Maharaj's teachings. Yet at the same time, his first teaching is not just to his classmates, his first teaching is actually to his own father, Hiran who was a great demon. And Prahlad Maharaj, immediately realizing what that his father, you know, is engaged in all these uh, demonic activities. And as, yes, from birth, Sham Gopal Das yes, best time for Krishna consciousness is in the mother's womb. Yes, very nice answers. Thank you. But best time to Krishna consciousness is now. <laughs> it's the very present moment. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada actually stresses that we, we can become Krishna conscious instantly at this very moment. We should not waste any more time. Just because we did not hear it in the womb doesn't make us less qualified. We all have an equal opportunity. And now is the best time to be Krishna conscious, the present moment. Because we can't think of the past because that would be lamenting. And waiting to have, make it happen in the future is aspiring to have, make it happen when we are old, where we become invalid. We can't even do material activities. So sometimes people, they have this attitude, hey, I have to take to Krishna conscious when I'm old, retired from my job. And that never happens. <laughs> So now is the best time to take to Krishna consciousness. And Prahlad Maharaj, when he is meeting his father, and Hiranyakashipu nicely picks up his son and you know, makes him sit on his lap and says, what is, what is that you have learned? And we do that to children, right? We, when we have our children, we ask them, what did you learn in school today? And we expect that the children will tell us a story. 
Baba Drakshi Haryana Gori, or Tunka Tunka Little Star. Yet at the same time, Prahlad Maharaj, he's already you know, a great devotee, and he has received instruction directly from Narad Muni when he was in his mother's womb. So he says, my dear father, king of the demons, you know, if a person may have conquered the whole world, but has not been able to conquer their mind, they should leave their home and go to, go and live in the forest. Now, these are very harsh words. <laughs> Where Hinakashipu, he doesn't take him seriously because he says, oh, these children, they just pick up from here and there. And he says, it seems like some Vaishnavas are, you know, getting into our camp. So he smiles, he notes that the statement, while Prahara Maharaj is really in a loving mood, he wants the welfare of his father, and that's why he's asking his father to not be a slave of his mind, not be, you know, engaged in sense gratification. Then Shanda and Amulka, these are the two teachers, the sons of Shukracharya. They are the teachers who are teaching uh, all the children and Prahlad Maharaj is also under their care. Second time, when Prahlad Maharaj is presented in front of Hinakashipu, and this time Kayadu, his mother, is very nicely dressing him up, you know, to be presented so that Hinakashipu would like. Prahlad, and he asks, so what is the best thing that you have learned? So now Prahlad Maharaj, he reveals the very best thing that he has learned in the school. And that is Shamanam Kitanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevanam Achanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam Iti Pumsa Krita Vishnu Bhakti Chen Navalakshanaha Kriyate Bhagavat Yadda Tanmanye Dhitam Uttamam. So Prahlan Maharaj is saying Shamanam hearing Kitan chanting the transcendental holy names and forms, qualities, paraphernalia, and pastimes for Lord Vishnu Smaranam, remembering them and serving the lotus feet of the Lord, Pada Sevanam. Archinam is deity worship, worshipping with 16 types of paraphernalia and Vandanam, singing prayers, offering prayers to the Lord and Dasyam, being a servant to the Lord, Sakyam, being the Lord's best friend and Atman is serving everything for Lord's pleasure with mind, body, and words. So name these nine processes are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. Now, my dear devotees, this time Hirakashipu is not taking it easy. He is upset. And he immediately calls Shanta and Amarka and says, what is it that you are teaching my son? And they're like, no, this is not what we have taught him. And what is it that they're supposed to teach him? Their purpose is the subject matter is how to be diplomat, how to exploit resources, how to exploit people. That's, that's the kind of subject matters they are trying to teach to their students and how to make friends with powerful people or influential people and you know, defeat your enemies by creating camps. So all this kutiditi, you know, these are the activities that Shandana Murka are trying to teach. And being sons of Shukracharya, they are learned, yet at the same time, they are also seeking sense gratification by you know, if they teach these students very nicely, then Hinakashipu will give them a lot of wealth, you know, will give them a lot of facilities, and they will be able to live peacefully and happily. So looking at sense clarification. So here in this instance, when Bahar Maharaj is taken back, so he is uh, being again brought under the care of these two teachers, and when they leave during the recess time, what happens? All the kids, they are playing together. And at that time, Prahlad Maharaj, he is saying, let's not play. Let's engage in devotional service. And now all the children, they are surprised. Oh, no, this is our age to play. We are supposed to be enjoying our time as children. We are not supposed to be 
doing this, but they were very pious. So they, you know, being influenced by the words of Prahlad Maharaj, so much compassion and so much enchanting words of Prahlad Maharaj, they wanted to hear. They were saying, you have not heard this. So, so some of the thing is, some, some, if someone shares with us that they have something, we want to know how did they get it? When did they get it? So they asked this question. I don't think we have seen any Vaishnava here. So when did you get this knowledge? And Prahlad Maharaj shares that actually, when Indra had attacked, when my father had gone to do meditation to please Lord Brahma and get the boon from Lord Brahma, at that time Indra had attacked. And at that time, when Indra was dragging my mother and I was in a womb, Devashi Narad, he appeared. And he said that there's a Mahabhagavat in her womb. Indra was thinking that this is a snake's son is another snake. So this is a demon who's going to take birth and I will kill the child before, you know, when it's in early stage. So then Indra realizing that Devashinada is revealing that this personality is actually a Mahabhagavad, the demigods, they circumambulated, paid obeisances to Kayadu and they left. So basically to Prahlana, who's still in her womb. And Devashinada takes her to his ashram. Now it's very interesting that Devashinada, he actually has a curse from Daksha, that he will never be able to stay at one place at the same time. Yet at the same time, he also has a revelation by Lord Krishna that in Vrindavan Chetra, he can stay because this is not a material world, it's a spiritual world. So his ashram is actually in Vrindavan Chetra. So this is where he is stay, uh, keeping Kayadu during this time, and he's revealing transcendental knowledge to her. And Prayama says that, yes, my mother, being a woman, and it's been a long time back, she has forgotten most of it. But I have remembered, even in the womb, we have so many examples. Abhimanyu, you know, when Arjun was revealing to Subhadra how to penetrate and, you know, into Chakravyu formation of an army, she was listening. So Abhimanyu remembered from the womb how to enter, but then she fell asleep, which meant the baby also fell asleep. So Abhimanyu could not remember, learn how to get out of it after destroying the Chakravyu formation. So here we see that in the womb is the best time, as many of you have said. But if we did not receive it in the womb, now is the best time. So Pahal Maharaj is revealing this. And this is such a revelation that all the classmates, they are interested to know more. And they now are hearing from Prahlan Maharaj and he's revealing that you know, first 20 years are just spent in Bali, Kaal, and Kishora age, 10 plus 10, 20 years are gone. Last 20 years, if we have 100 years of human life on the planet, are also gone because we become invalid. We cannot even perform material activities. And in the middle is the time, so 40 years gone out of 100, and 30% of the time, one third is the time that we are spent in sleeping. So that also takes away. So 70 years are gone, only 30 years are remaining. So time is precious. And this human birth is a great boon for us to take to Krishna consciousness. Now, Srila Prabhupada, he reveals in the transcendental knowledge that actually there are two types of living entities, humans, de demons and demigods. Who are demons? Demons are one, those who don't follow the injunction of the Shastras. Demigods are the ones who follow the rules and regulation injunctions of the Shastra, they are pious. While demons are of the mindset that, yes, I want to have sense gratification and by hook or crook, I will uh, be able to satisfy. So materialistic desires are being persuaded by demons. And Prahlan Maharaj is saying that don't live frivolously, Let, take up to Krishna consciousness. Take up Krishna consciousness because this human birth is a very real birth. And when he's revealing this, again, Srila Prabhupada in his book on transcendental teachings of Prahan Maharaj, he's revealing that by nature's law, human body is ultimately given to us so that we can promote ourselves in spiritual life and go back home, back to Godhead. So we should know the purpose of everything in our life. So if I was to ask you, my dear devotees, what's the purpose of marriage? 
so purpose of marriage is to beget a child so what's the purpose of human birth purpose of human birth is to engage in devotional service so everything in our life has a specific purpose and we should this is our responsibility to know what the purpose of this human birth is and by engaging in spiritual life we can make our life perfect now many times materialists they are working very hard and they are engaged in this hard work and they get frustrated seeing the devotees saying that these devotees are having all the facilities while we are working so hard well you made your choice we made our choice so again by the mercy of sadhu guru and shastra we are actually following krishna consciousness which says that it is su sukham kartum abhyam <laughs> so it is joyfully performed and it can be performed continuously so we can be joyful continuously while engaging in material sense gratification leads to lust and greed the three gates to hell constant lamentation and aspiring for more and a person is really frustrated and the cycle is very easily understood in bhagavad gita what is the reason is this jayate vishyan pum sa sangashte shuk jayate sangha sanjayate kama kamat krodho vijayate kulda bhakti samoha samoha smriti bhum sat smriti bhum sat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat vinashyati jayate vishyan pum sa when we meditate on the sense objects and we develop attachment sangash desh pujate we develop attachment to those sense objects sangha sanjayate kama from this attachment lust develops kama krodh vijayate so if you get a, you know what you are looking for you want more and more of it and finally you get frustrated if you don't get it you actually get frustrated so you become angry upset krodhat bhavati sammohat and that causes bewilderment sammoha smriti bhamsad and once intelligence is lost smriti bhamsad buddhi nasho so again intelligence is lost buddhi nashat vinashati and that leads to destruction now this cycle we understand as revealed in bhagavad gita so we have to in proper perspective understand that yes i should not be engaging in sense gratification rather i should be engaging in krishna consciousness anukulya sa sankalpa pratikulya sa vajana so i should take up all things that are favorable for my devotional service and reject all things that are unfavorable to devotional service by doing this and taking this approach we make our life blissful now shall proper reveals that people in this material world are enamored by the material energy and they do not know what the goal of human life is why because they are enchanted by lord's external energy maya and why are they so much seeking sense gratification because anand bhay abhyas that everyone is looking for happiness yet at the same time people are looking at the wrong places it's like trying to find water in a desert and all you the animal says they are seeing mirage basically it's a reflection of sky onto the ground making them think that there is water and they chase the mirage but there is no water in the desert so they are chasing mirage after mirage after mirage and finally being frustrated they lose their life while to be happy first we have to be peaceful and this peace formula in bhagavad gita fifth chapter is very nice to do bhuktaram yagya tapsam sarva lok maheshwaram suhridam sarva bhuta nam gyatva mam shanti nirchati bhuktaram yagya tapsam so who is the beneficiary of all sacrifices yagya tap again sacrifices austerities and so forth sarva lok maheshwaram and lord krishna is the supreme proprietor of material as well as spiritual universes all that can be and surhidam sarva bhutana and he is the very dear friend best friend of every living entity not just us but every living entity char achar moving and non moving so here we have to understand that we take to krishna consciousness and we understand that yes lord is our best friend 
And when we understand this aspect that he is our best friend, he is the proprietor of all that can be, and everything should be done for his satisfaction, then we call out to him, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, calling out to him with our heart, with full emotions that my dear Lord, my dear Mother Radha, please engage me in your devotional service. And Srila Prabhupada says, this is like cry of a child for the mother. And a child is easily satisfied as soon as the mother picks up the child in her lap. However, in this material world, people do not know these very basic things. And they are engaged in all these material activities, trying to overcome the frustration that they are seeing day in and day out, just like animals chasing mirage. Why are they doing this? Because they're looking for self-preservation. That's the first law of nature. You know, and sense gratification per one's material body, that is based on different kind of you know, birds or different kind of material bodies people get. We know that hogs, they eat stool. Now, a stool is a very abominable thing. Camels, they actually, you know, bite on the thorns and the thorns penetrate their jaws, their gums, their teeth, and the blood oozes out. And they taste that blood thinking, oh, this is very sweet. So, these kind of food may be nice food for hogs and camels, but we know that these are abominable things. Would we eat? No, we will not eat that kind of stuff. So what's the real concern? Therefore, we should seek the higher goal in life. And the higher goal in life is the human, of the human birth is to be Krishna conscious. Jivera Surupaya Krishna Nityadas. We living entities are eternal servant of Lord Krishna. Krishna Tathashti Shakti, we are the marginal potency. Veda Veda Prakash. When we engage in devotional service, then we are not different. That doesn't mean that we become God. Rather, it is to reveal that we are in the right mood and line and aligned with Krishna's desire. So, material life, as Prahlad Maharaj is revealing to his classmates, Srila Prabhupada gives a very nice example. He had met another elderly gentleman who had left his family. And what happened was, he was discussing with Srila Prabhupada and he says that I just got a letter from my son and he started discussing that yes I'm I was as soon as I got this letter and my son is in some financial difficulty I immediately thought about my affection for my son and I sent him money so Srila Prabhupada said this is what family bind, bindings are that even though the person had left home that attachment to sense objects to you know, family still exist, and it's easy for one to get attached and further act, which is which may act very strange. Somebody, sometimes people even take loan and debt and so forth, so that they can support the family. Right? In family life, people take mortgage. We were having this conversation, dear devotees, yesterday. Mort means until death. Engage is engagement. Mortgage means we are engaged until death. That's not the purpose of life. So we should be very, very careful what we are doing, why we are doing. Ask that question ourselves to seek out. And this is what Prahlad Maharaj in his teaching is revealing. And his aspect is, if we are engaging in materialistic life, then we are spoiling our lives. That's the next topic. So, if we are lamenting about the past or you know, aspiring for the future, both of them cause anxiety. And anxiety is something that we should avoid. And as it is just time provided, we should work for Krishna because Krishna provides. Now, yesterday we were covering uh, Ritrasu's pastime in the 21-day 21, uh, 21 challenge program, day nine. And it was very interesting that when sometimes people, they hear Vartasu's pastime, they say, okay, Chitra Ketu, he's born as Vartasu, and Lord is approached by Indra, and in that 
very instance, Lord Vishnu is revealing, which is causing death of two of his devotees, <laughs> so material body. One is Dadichi Rishi. He's saying his bones have exceptional power, so you should ask him to give you his bones. And second is use that Vajra that will be uh, built by Vishkama to kill Vratrasu. So sometimes people say, wait a minute, these are two devotees of the Lord and Lord is asking them to be killed. Actually, this is where we see that Lord is actually calling them back. And sometimes people are not so much uh, in mature state to understand that actually the purpose of human birth is to go back home, back to Godhead by engaging in devotional service, to have that love of Godhead. So their journey in reality, Dadichi as well as Vitrasu, they are able to pass over and go back home, back to Godhead. So their life is perfect. My dear devotees, I'll ask you, if you have taken a flight from one place to another, do you really care what happens to the plane after you have reached your destination? No. You, the purpose of that plane was take you from your you know, starting place and make you reach the destination. That's what this human birth is all about. This is the perfection of life. And we can spiritualize our life through chanting of the Holy Name, through deity worship, through devotee association, through a bare living at Dham, and of course, Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is not different than Krishna. So again, we understand these aspects. And make our life perfect. And that's the message that Prahlan Maharaj is sharing. He's saying that boys, they have this tendency to play, but Krishna consciousness is the highest enjoyment. So we should seek that higher taste. When we have higher taste, we don't have any attachment to the lower taste, the abominable things in life. And in this regard, Srila Prabhupada, he shares that one of his students, when he went back home, the, you know, as a disciple's mother, she was surprised that this son of hers was never helping in any of the house chores or anything, but now he was very much dedicated and very nicely treating her with a very you know, respectable voice and very nice dealings. So this, all good qualities of demigods develop in us when we engage in Krishna consciousness. And while in materialistic life, what is the mindset? Ahamamiti. Thinking of this body, one is constantly thinking of I and mine. I leads to many destinations. I'm an American, I'm a manager, I'm a husband, I'm a man. All these I designations are actually related to this body. And it causes envy from others because now people are comparing positions. And mamiti, mine, this is all mine. This is my house, this is my car, this is my wife, this is, and these are my children, this is my property. This causes lust, envy and lust. These two things drive us away from Krishna consciousness. So we have to understand this from the right perspective, my dear devotees. And Prahlad Maharaj is telling us that we should love Krishna more than anything. A householder's life, Srila Prabhupada compares with a silkworm. A silkworm builds through its own saliva the cocoon on which it gets trapped and cannot come out. Yes, and the cocoon is another example. And if you can think of any other example, my dear devotees, I would like to encourage you to share in the chat. And so while we are engaging in family life for sense gratification, that's the mood of a grahamedhi. When we are engaging our family for Krishna's pleasure in Krishna consciousness, that is the mood of a grahastha. Now, even though Prahal Mahaj is saying so very strong words, he's actually a grahastha. He has his son, Uruchana, who has his son, Bali Maharaj. So again, we see that Prahal Maharaj is a grahastha, but he is carrying it out as per Varanashan Dhamma. And that's also given in seventh uh, chapter, seventh canto, Nishimut Bhagavatam. And understanding that God is everywhere. God is all pervasive. And he does not lose his personality. He is a person. We know the example of sunlight, sun globe, and sun god. He was one. So similarly, we see Brahman. And then we have Paramatma, the super soul in the heart. And then Bhagavan. 
वदंती तत्वस्तम यज ज्ञानम अभियम ब्रह्मेति परमात्मे भगवान शब्द से लर्न एट ट्रांसलेंटल ट्रूथ सी दूथ इन थ्री फॉर्म्स ब्रह्मा ने फर्जेंस जस्ट लाइक सन लाइट परमात्मा सुपर सोल इन द हार्ट जस्ट लाइक दन लोक एंड लॉर्ड कृष्ण भगवान हिमसेल्फ just like we were swan is the sun god so there is an analogy shri prabhu shares in this regard and krishna consciousness is actually the perfect perfection of mercy and is again is the perfect solution and is the perfection of mercy we should be merciful to all living entities but does that mean that we can provide food for all living entities and clothes to all living entities the millions of poor people but to provide them clothes and food is not possible and that pertains to the external body real mercy is giving krishna consciousness and prahlad maharaj example of preaching to his classmate is revealing that the highest mercy is to give krishna consciousness to others even though prahlad maharaj is born you know among the demons he is still a saintly person he has been taught by demonic teachers chandra namarka sons of shukracharya yet he does not leave his shelter of devishinara the teachings of devishinara he is doing anukaran uh, anusharan not anukaran so anukaran is imitating someone anusharan is taking shelter to their instructions and we say in this material world many lawyers are there they are learned lawyers but what are they doing they always tend to cheat so the game in practical life we see so many examples every time there is a court case you see those two lawyers from opposite side they are actually conspiring to steal from the clients as well as from the victim both because that's what their goal is their goal is not to say, help their client their goal is to let the case run as long as possible so that they can make good money and why are they cheating they are cheating because they are seeking sense gratification they have materialistic view of life and this is the mood of a materialistic person that they deny the existence of god they engage in hard work like hawks and asses and engaging in krishna consciousness is perfection of life that is the goal of life that perfection to get love of god at raj vidya raj ko yam pavitram idam uttamam pratyakshwa vagnam dharmam susukam kartum abhyam you are krishna reveals in the ninth chapter of bhagavad gita that this knowledge is raj vidya it is the king of all knowledge raj ko yam it is the greatest of all secrets pavitram it is purifying and it is uttamam it is the best knowledge pratyakshwa vagnam dharma so we can actually get direct perception when we engage in krishna consciousness su sukham kartum abhya and it is joyfully performed and we know the effect of this kali age where the maximum is 100 years prayana alpayusha sabhya kala vasmin yuge jana mand sumand matyo mand bhagye prutva so this kali age is alpayu people have short lives and kala was when they quarrel some the nature this age of kali is also age of quarrel is referred to as manda they are lazy sumanda mate not very intelligent manda bhage they are unlucky and upradita and they constantly disturb this is the effect of kali age but at the same time हरे नाम हरे नाम हरे नाम एव केवलम कला नाश्ते एव नाश्ते एव नाश्ते एव गते रन्य था दिस कली एज इट्स इफेक्ट्स विल बी कंप्लीटली टेकन अवे इफ वी टेक टू द चैंटिंग ऑफ द होली नेम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो प्रहर महाराज इज इंस्ट्रक्टिंग हिज स्कूलमेट्स He is instructing his father that please take to Krishna consciousness, and these are the essential teachings as we cover today, my dear devotees. And we of course talked about the nine process of devotion service: Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedam. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you, Prabhuji, for the wonderful class. and i request devotees if you have any question please feel free to unmute or raise your hand and you know and prabhu i really like to thank you i know you're not feeling well also but still you took the service and like you know and uh, serving us thank you very much prabhu ji thank you i'm just grateful that i'm getting this opportunity 
Yes, Mataji, I see your hand. Hare Krishna Prabhu, very beautiful class. I've not heard your class before. This is the first time, but I thoroughly enjoyed every word that you said. Thank you so much. And even with the bad health, you were able to take the class. Thank you, Prabhu. I just have one question, Prabhu. Um, I don't know how to reconcile this thought. Um, that's why I wanted to clarify it with you. Um, Narad Muni gave the message of transcendental knowledge. Being in Vrindavan, you said, it is a holy dham. Still, only Prahalad Maharaj caught it. Kayadu did not. When I think about that, uh, it's okay. But then Prahalad Maharaj gave it to the Asura children, right? Mm -hmm. They were able to get that under Hiranyakashipu's reign. Being Asuras, they were able to perform a little bit of bhakti, but Kayadu could not. Is it because of the free will that we have that we don't take up to Krishna consciousness sometimes? Or is it because of the vasanas? If I think about the Atma and the vasana, then the uh, children with Prahlad Maharaj shouldn't have done that because they had the vasana of being Asuri, right? They shouldn't have. But they took up to Krishna consciousness and Prahlad Maharaj's guru is, I mean, Prahlad Maharaj is more powerful. I don't know who is much better, Narad Muni or both are equally powerful in their uh, preaching. But uh, Kayadu could not get even uh, that transcendental knowledge. I mean, that question is always there, but there are many answers to it maybe, but I just wanted to hear it from you, Prabhu. Yes, I, I want to actually bring up that verse specifically because Prahlad Maharaj is saying that I remember my mother uh, doesn't remember this. So there is a specific verse where he reveals Prahlad instructs his demonic Okay, so there are two parts to your question. First is, he is born in a demonic family. Now, when we say demonic family, sometimes we have the tendency to assume things. We take that there to be demonic. What does that there really mean? That there means the descendants of Diti. Okay. And Adityas are the descendants of Aditi. They are both sisters, real sisters. They have the same husband. Right? Okay. So both have the equal opportunity. But Diti being more driven, like you said, Vasna aspect, she is getting more information. And with case of Hirnaksha and Hirnakashu, she approached her husband at an inappropriate time in the evening. Mm. And that caused her to get these two demon sons. But we also know that these two demon sons are still under the effect of yoga maya, being bewildered and acting as demons. They are not under the shelter of Mahamaya, by the way. Uh, and people get surprised when they hear, like, wait a minute, these are demons. But in Vakunta, where Kunta, a place where there's no Kunta, no anxiety, you cannot have a fight, you know, with the Lord. Jaya Vijay had this desire that they wanted to test out, you know, have a uh, duel with Lord. And so only in material world that is possible. So they came in this way. And Kayadu was pregnant with Prahlad Maharaj. And Lord Nasima Dev is also given Padma reveals to Prahlad Maharaj that in his previous birth, he was at uh, Nasima temple and he cleaned up the temple with his girlfriend was there. And that just cleaning up the temple, a basic service, to stay there overnight and he was having a conflict with her so they stayed you know separate so there was some austerity lord became so pleased that he gave him an opportunity not just be born as the son of god but also get shelter of devashi Marat. and brahman maya says this when he's being asked by lord brahma to satisfy lord nasima dev who's very angry after killing his dad, he's still not calmed down. He's still not calm. So Parama says, I'm born in a demonic family. All these great you know, personalities from all these 
wonderful planets, they are glorifying you. I do not know how to glorify you. Yet at the same time, whatever our capability I have, I have this by the mercy of my spiritual master. Children are like sponges. We all know this, right? <laughs> Sometimes we can actually recall some of the events when we were children because we were absorbing everything. Sometimes parents are talking and children are absorbing everything, which reminds me of a very nice story. Uh, parents, they were called for a child by the school, by the principal, and the principal said that your child had been stealing others' pencils and pens and rubbers, and that is not acceptable. The father becomes angry. How would you do that? Don't I get you all these things from my office? <laughs> <laughs> The children, they, they pay attention to what the parents are doing, so they just replicate it. They, they, they take those very fast. They're like sponges. And Prahlad Maharaj, even though in the womb, this is Satya Yuga. So when Prahlad Maharaj appeared, everyone was already a Hamsa. Now sometimes people say that everyone born in Satya Yuga was a Hamsa, yet here at Ashwabhimaraj also existed at the same time. And they were demonic because of the influence. So Narad Muni, he taught Kayadi, the principles of spiritual life. That being a woman in that age, and this is Prahla Maharaj's words, not mine, he says that it was a long time back, and she being a woman has forgotten it. Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. Kayadu, she could not hear those instructions attentively. That's mm -hmm. the other thing. When in the womb, as a child, being a sponge, absorbing everything, Prahlad Maharaj was attentively listening. So that's why, you know, why, why was this the case? Because Kayadu was very anxious for her husband's return and also for her child's well-being. Mm -hmm. She had seen that demigods had attacked and now she is waiting for her husband to complain, of course, that, you know, while you were gone, your half-brothers, half-cousins, they attacked your kingdom. So... She was in anxiety, and that's why she could not remember. She, she was not so focused. But Prahala Maharaj, he was fully focused by the mercy of the Lord. So again, remembrance, forgetfulness, and knowledge, they all come from the Lord. Sarvasachaham Rizisam Nivishto Maktas Mithir Gyanam Apohanam Chat. Lord Krishna says, 15.15, that from me comes remembrance, forgetfulness, and knowledge. Hopefully this answers your question. Very yes, Prabhu. Very nice. Thank you, Prabhu. And that actually answers very well because sometimes I'd be hearing the same class when devotees ask questions. I'll be like, where did I miss that point? Because I'm kind of either sleeping or not paying attention. So that makes complete sense. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you for asking. Yes, Prahlad Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Dhanur Pranam to everyone. Dhanur Pranam to my Guru Bhai, Jeev Tattvadas. <laughs> I'm also a disciple of His Holiness uh, Gopal Krishna Goswami. When he initiated me back in 1984 in the city of Nairobi in Africa, he gave me this name and I had asked him, uh, Guruji, which slok should I <laughs> learn more from uh, Prahlad Maharaj? And he gave me this slok which says, Etavan hi lokes means swartha param sutta. So this is one of the, the key slokas of Prahlad Maharaj's teachings. And I always am so grateful that, you know, I learned this slok from him personally and he taught me like that. So I just wanted to add this little for our <laughs> discussion here. To realize it. Thank you very much for an excellent discourse you gave, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yes. Hare Krishna. Shemi Madachi. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Hare Krishna, Hemi Mataji, we cannot hear you. Could you be louder? Yes, but very low. Yeah, maybe you can come near to speak at your mic, please. Mother, you want to give it a try again? Uh, 
but if you can, you can type in the chat and we can address it there. Hare Krishna. So I'm seeing Nirjan Mataji for the class. Thank you. And Patitan Jagannath Prabhu. Uh, Prahlad was in the womb when Hirakashiva went on Tapasya and he was born once he's back from Tapasya. How long was he in the womb? <laughs> Very interesting question. He was for a long time in the womb. So again, Different ages have different lifespans. So in Satyuga, people could live for hundreds, thousands of years. And in the womb also, it would be longer duration. Uh, Trita Yuga for 10,000 of years was the lifespan. In Dwapar Yuga, it was a thousand years, earthly years. And then in Kali Yuga, it's hundred years. And I am trying to recall while Hinakashu uh, was still doing his uh, tapasya, all that duration she was still pregnant. But she had given birth. I can't quite recall exactly, Prabhu, how long that was. But the baby was born and he presented the mother and the baby, Devashinath presented to Hinakashu. And Hinakashu was very grateful to Devashinath, knowing. That Devashi Narad is a devotee of Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna. And while he is envious of Lord Krishna, while he is considering Lord Krishna as his enemy, he, here we see that he, is, he has this gratefulness because of the effect of the age as well. Hare Krishna. How can a lawyer be Krishna conscious? I have some in my family, they can benefit from it. So, one very simple way is tell them is we should always pray for them. One of the things that we have learned is if we have some family members who are not Krishna conscious, we should pray to the Lordship to make them Krishna conscious. We should give them prasadam. We should give them association. Not just take, you know, we should try to avoid taking their association, but actually ask them some intriguing questions so that they have the time to ponder and realize that what's the purpose of life? Why are they engaged in all these activities and not really understanding the purpose of life? Materialistic uh, mindset of sense enjoyment is an illusion created by Mahamaya, uh, this material energy of the Lord, the external potency of the Lord. And Helping them realize that it's only leading them to make more and more plans, but leading to frustration. They should seek to give them that higher taste by engagement. And everybody loves to sing, you know, and encourage them to offer some Lakshmi to the temple or buy bhoga and engage them, Agyasukriti. Just engage them in devotional service this way or that way. I mean, sometimes we do this, we say, it's a potluck, and then we call everyone. And we say, okay, everyone's bringing something, we are offering it to the Lord's ship, and then it's followed by Kirtan. Everybody loves music. So people are pious in their heart. It's just that their Krishna consciousness is dormant. But as soon as we spark that, you know, fan that spark, immediately that revelation of original relationship comes to life. Hopefully that answers your question. How can Allah be Krishna conscious? Many times, scripture's words may feel harsh because they would deal with renunciation. <coughs> what would be your advice for someone who finds attractive the idea of devotional service but is afraid of leaving the materialistic ideas and most of all materialistic relatives who emotionally depending on this person who are emotionally depending on this person and it would seem to break them if one is choosing a different way of life and disconnects from them. Very important question. So bhakti is a gradual process. It is not like a digital that 
So yes, we can take to bhakti and we can encourage others to take to bhakti. Yet at the same time, it is performed joyfully. So sukham kartu madhya. Srila Prabhupada's his own life, we see that in his in the scriptures, he would present the truth as it is. But in dealing with people, he was very flexible. When somebody even says a very repulsive idea, he would say, that's all right. Why don't you do this? So he would encourage them to take to that gradual process of further engaging in Krishna consciousness. You know, let's look at this particular perspective. So he would be in a very compassionate mood, encourage others. So this is where we have to understand that Krishna consciousness has to be given yet in a compassionate mood. It has to be, if you present someone a nice gift, then the packaging should also be very nice. And that is up to us. We want Krishna consciousness to be so nicely packaged that people get attracted just by the packaging. So, and then they were saying, whoa, wait a minute. This is amazing. Shri Prabhupada used to give this example that if somebody has a diamond and it's very nicely put on a golden ring, the diamond is beautifying the ring and the ring is beautifying the diamond. So that's what it is. Krishna consciousness should be packaged so nicely, so compassionately, so wonderfully that the person is feeling warmth, feeling that sweetness in our dealings. Hopefully that answers your question. Being kind is better than being right. And <laughs> that's also something we learn as we go through. Uh, I think probably one question we left maybe like, now, who was uh, Prahlad Maharaj in his previous life? Who was? Prahlad Maharaj in his, in his previous life. Now my question would be, which Prahlad Maharaj are we talking about? <laughs> so we understand this Lord Nasima Dev's pastime that's being discussed in Srimad Bhagavatam. But there have been many Nasima Dev's pastimes in many different times. Uh, the Chatur Yuga is going on, not in every Chatur Yuga. Lord Nasima Dev would appear, but sometimes he would appear in red color, sometimes he would appear in bright color. Uh, so this particular Prahlad Maharaj in his previous life, let's just say he was, it's what is important is that unknowingly, Agya Sukriti, he was able to please the Lord. And that's the causeless mercy of Lord. And Lord sees the sincerity in his heart and even unknowingly performs some Sukriti. Lord takes it as an opportunity to give him Devashi Narada's teacher. I think that's where the glories are. Brahma Bhavite Kaun Bhagyavana Jeeva Guru Krishna Prasadipaya Bhakti Lata Viva. We are all wandering in this material world. But some fortunate soul, by the mercy of Lord Krishna, gets the shelter of a spiritual master. So while we, you are focusing on Prahla Maharaj's previous birth, you should focus on that Lord Krishna's causeless mercy, enabling unknowingly performed devotional service that Prahlad Maharaj performed in his previous life. In his previous life, it is said that he was a materialistic person and he was with his girlfriend, so he did not have a legitimate relationship with her. Yet at the same time, because they performed some austerity and cleaned Lord Nasimadev's temple. Now I understand, in his previous life, he's cleaning Nasimadev's temple while Nasimadev is appearing later on because there have been many Nasima Devs in different ages that have appeared. At one time, Hiranyakashipu forgot to ask that I can be killed inside or outside. So Nasima Dev, he just walked through the street, went and right on his throne, tears him apart. So we have to understand that the teachings are more important than trying to understand who this person was in his previous life. Bali Maharaj, in his previous life, he was uh, attracted to a prostitute. And basically, he, you know, by hook or crook, he would make, uh, bring gifts. And so once he was very nicely dressed and sitting close, he was carrying big platter of jewels and different kind of paraphernalia for her. Some thugs, you know, they robbed him and they beat him up. So as he was dying, 
because of the effect. He saw Shivling and he actually built Patra came in his hand and he just dropped it on Manashwai, upper Musti. When he says that, he gets the benefit to so he is brought in front of Yamaraj. I'm giving you a different example. Like sometimes we are so much looking at his personality. So in his previous life, Bali Maharaj in this particular case was brought in front of Yamaraj and he's saying okay, that what should, uh, you know, is there any pious activity he's performed? Yamaraj is asking Chitragupta, his secretary. Chitragupta is like, you know what? He has done all abominable things all his life, but Right before dying, he offered Bail Patra to Lord Shiva. So now Bari Maharaj, you know, he's not Bari Maharaj yet. He is still that soul. He's in a subtle body. He's hearing that I offered something as charity to Lord Shiva. And that gives me some piety. So he gets about 42 minutes of time. And he says, what can I do with this 42 minutes? Can I be Indra? And he's given the opportunity to be Indra. He has learned one thing by offering it to pious people there is there are great results. And he is taken to Indra Lok. And Indra is upset that, you know, this person will be Indra for 42 minutes, Muhurta for Muhurta. And so at that time, Agni and others, they say, let's just go for a walk. What is 42 minutes? You know, we'll just be back in that time. And when he is put on, you know, he's given the throne, Devashina tests this personality who's later on Bali Maharaj. By saying, you know, Shachi, she is Indra's wife. Would you like to enjoy her? He said, no, because his mind is focused on one thing. I offered something to Lord Shiva, and that caused me to get to become Indra for a Mohutam. And so he immediately calls all those rishis and he starts giving them charity. By the time Indra comes, all of Indra's wealth has been distributed. <laughs> now, 42 minutes, the Mohuta is over. Uh, is brought back to Yamlok and Nachitrugup says, this person cannot be taken to hell. He has done too many pious activities. Just by one remembrance by the Lord Shiv, a person's whole karma cycle has reversed. And then he is given the opportunity to be born as Pali Maharaj, son of Virochana. And we all know the Atma Nivedana aspect as how he pleases the Lord and Lord glorifies him for his tolerance and he gives him Sutala planet, which is even more glorious than the heavenly planets. So I'm just giving you some example. What's important is that Lord is so loving. He's so sweet. He's so merciful. And we need to appreciate that aspect. And of course, take shelter of our Guru, who is so merciful to us. They are Lord's representative. And they are giving us this Krishna consciousness, which is the perfection of knowledge. Hare Krishna. Hopefully this answers the question. Prabhuji. Yes. Thank you, Prabhuji, for this. Uh, because I know there are some more comments. Uh, sure. But I know, uh, I'll just leave it up to you, Prabhuji. I know you're not feeling well also, so I don't want to keep you here longer than needed. Yes. Yeah. Again, I say Vrishpumi Mataji, she's talking about initiated Vaishnavas who are lawyers. Which is true. We have initiated Vaishnavas who are actually stock brokers. <laughs> and when you talk about no gambling, they say we are not gambling. This is our work. And we use logic in there. So, and people are very humble. So it's not what you do, it's how you do it matters the most. What is your mindset when you're engaging in those kind of activities? Where's the reference of that Prahlad Maharaj was a materialistic person in of Temple of Andy Bhuan. Good point, Prabhu. I do not know that particular aspect. I'll just be straightforward. I heard it from some of the sannyasis and I was also trying to find. I have been also looking at some references in detail. Padma Puran does talk about Padi Maharaj and other aspects. And we do know that uh, this reference has been given in scriptures that he was, uh, you know, with his consort in previous life and he entered the temple. I'll have to find the reference later on to share it with you. Or maybe I can share it with uh, Isha Krishna Prabhu and 
provide you the further reference. Thank, thank you. you. Dear devotees, let's say uh, thanks to Prabhuji for the wonderful class by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. If you can unmute yourself, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Roj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Roj. Thank you. Thank you. Jai Shila Prabhupada. Jai. Anandu Padivasa. Jai. Jai Go Premanande. Hare Thank you, dear devotees. We will see you again tomorrow again with another class. It's going to be with His Holiness Giriraj Maharaj. Continue to this on Narsima, uh, like you know, the Narsima Dev Jain. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna.